In 2 Corinthians, it says, God has delivered us from such deadly peril, and God will deliver us. On God, we have set our hope, and God will continue to deliver us. A certain southern gentleman was returning home after recuperating in the mountains for three months. His friend George met him on the platform of the train station, and he said, George, has there been any news while I've been away? George replied, no, not that I can think of. There just hasn't been any news. The man said, no news. Come on, something must have happened while I've been away. I've been gone nearly three months, and I'm anxious for any little bit of news that you have. George paused for a moment and then said, Well, since you mention it, your dog died. The man said, My dog died? George replied, Yeah, you see, he went in to eat some of that burnt horse flesh, and that's what killed the dog. The man said, Burnt horse flesh? George said, you see, after the fire cooled off, the dog went in to eat some of that burnt horse flesh, and that's what killed the dog. The man asked, after the fire cooled off, George replied, yeah, you see, your barn burned down, burned all the cows and horses, and then the fire cooled off, and that's when the dog went in to eat some of the burnt horse flesh, and that's what killed your dog. The man said, my barn burned down? How did my barn burn down? George replied, well, it was a spark from the house. You see, it flew over the roof of the barn, burned down the barn, burned all the cows and horses. When the fire cooled off, that's when the dog went in to eat some of the burnt horse flesh. And that's what killed the dog. The man asked, a spark from my house? And George said, well, that's completely gone. Burned down. The man asked, how did my house burn down? And George said, well, it was the candles. You see, they were under those curtains, and the flame just shot up the wall, burned down the house, and a spark went over the barn burned down the barn, burned all the cows and horses, and when the fire finally cooled off, the dog went in to eat some of that burnt horse flesh. And that's what killed the dog. And the man asked, candles? I never keep candles in my house. How did candles get into my house? And George said, well, they were around the coffin. The man said, the coffin? Who died? George said, you needn't worry about that. Since you have been gone, your mother-in-law died. The man said, oh, my mother-in-law? How in the world did she die? What a pity. George replied, well, some folks say, that it was the shock of hearing that your wife ran away with the chauffeur. But other than that, there hasn't been any news. <laughs> Sometimes no news is good news. Some situations in life are so very hard. In our hardest times, in faith as Christians, we know that God is with us. We know that we're never alone. We have the most wonderful and loving God that is waiting and willing to help us and to comfort us. God even has the power to turn around disasters in our lives, to bring back good into our lives. Have you ever wondered how to turn a bad day into a good one? Have you ever asked the question, how can we believe when we're going through something that seems so bad in the moment that God can turn even this disaster into ultimate good. First of all, I want to describe the human way of dealing with something bad. 
the human feeling that feels all alone. You know what it does? It freezes. You know what I mean by that? It's like the deer on the railroad tracks and a, a train approaches. The deer who runs swiftly just looks at the light, sees the danger, panics, and freezes. Many times, from our own human mind, we do the same thing. We lose our job, and instead of moving, we freeze. We lose someone that we love, and instead of moving, we freeze. We go through a great problem, and depression sets in. We have a lack of energy, even sickness, fatigue, and panic. Often, instead of using our God-given abilities, we just freeze right there on the railroad track of life. We have felt deserted, like an isolated island, all alone in a stormy sea. But this is not the truth of us. When we become spiritually ready, God is waiting and willing to help. The truth of us is that we are more because we have the more of God with us every single moment. In time, we may ask questions. Hopefully, they're faith-filled questions like, how can God make this right? Well, the answer is always bigger than we can comprehend at the moment. The answer is always better than we could ever hope for. God is the creator of all things, including your new life. If you don't hear anything else as you watch this television program, please hear this. If something bad has happened to you, God has already figured out how to make it right. God knows how to solve the maze that human mind can't see any way out of. God knows a way when you see no way. God can solve every problem. My friend, when you're down, remember God is up. And when you connect with God, everything changes. Know in your life that God can take care of everything. And the problems you may be dealing with, God knows the way to give you the highest solution. Solutions higher than you could even imagine in your own human thinking. What a wonderful knowledge this is. All you have to do is figure out a way to have more awareness of God in your life right now. We freeze by looking at the past, grieving, and we seemingly cannot move forward, at least on our own power, we freeze looking at the appearance of the problem. Jesus said, do not judge by appearances. This means to look to God instead of the problem. God is the only place that a solution can be found. Problems have to be solved at a higher level of mind than they were created at, and they can be in God. Is your concept of God a good God? Or do you have the same concept of God that the insurance companies have? Some insurance policies say we can't cover God's will. We cover almost everything, but if God's will happens, well, that is surely disaster coming to a person's life. And we don't, we don't cover that. They should say, if God's will comes to your life, it is absolute good. God's will is not disaster. God's will is not plague. God's will is not famine. God's will for you is to have abundance, to have success, to have creativity, love, wisdom, and ever-increasing peace of mind, good beyond anything that you could ever dream of. God's will is so many good things that the list is endless. 
It is our purpose in life to discover and to manifest God's will of absolute good and incorporate that into our daily life. We must change our God concept if we hold an opinion of God that's less than that. No matter what we call our religion, what church we go to, it's important to have a good concept of God. What we say about God says more about us than it does about God. God is unchangeable, always loving and always good towards you. When you're praying to God in the hospital for someone to be healed, Know that you're praying to a God of healing, of recreation, and of power that will happen in and through that person. It is always the highest and best. It's always higher than our own human mind can conceive of. God's will in your life is this. When disaster hits, or even a minor negative incident happens in your life, the best is yet to be. Often you'll hear a person say, how in the world can anything good come out of this? But it has when God comes out of this. God can change personal disaster into good. And God will actually come through you and empower you in times of personal crisis. Whenever anything of God comes through you, it refuses to be diluted. It constantly increases, and it grows in undiluted power. If you're going through a career change, especially when it is a mandatory change, where you have lost your job, accept with faith that the best is yet to come. Move forward with God. It is the absolute essential way to go toward your successful future. You are not alone. You are not looking for a job alone. God is looking for a job with you. And God is going to come through you. God is manifested in and through you with new God-given skills and abilities. And God will equip you so that all you need to do is to go out there, show up, and succeed. God will help you say the right things and lead you to the right opportunities. More good will come to you than ever before. Know that as you go toward that interview that the best is yet to be. You're going to have a power that is with you inside of you, and you're going to expect in your mind good outcomes. My friend, you are not defined by unemployment. You are defined by your faith. Whenever you have God with you, you can expect a good outcome, no matter what you're going through. A major false belief of human mind is that anyone can keep my good from me, some company or some individual. This is absolutely impossible. No one can keep your God-given good from you because God is with you always and God is bigger than your problems. There is no person, no situation that has that kind of power to hold it over your life because you are spiritually one with God. God's laws cannot be broken by leaning on them. Lean on God. Prove God. So many people do not want to lean on God unless a huge, huge crisis comes into their life. Say instead, okay God, I'm standing here with my faith intact. And I know something good is going to happen here. Believe it. Believe in good outcomes. And from your human mind and human eyes, you're going to be amazed at what happens. Walls will move. Old boundaries will disappear. And you'll have new avenues come to you that are better than anything that you could have imagined. Oliver Wendell Holmes said, The greatest tragedy is that most people will go to the grave with the music still in them. But you won't, because you have God with you. 
You won't because you have faith with you. You won't because the best is yet to be.